You know what, though? That's a good thing. That is a good thing. You know, sometimes we say that our children are the church of tomorrow, but they're actually in the church of today that's growing into tomorrow. Amen. So they're part now and they're going to be a part later. So it's a good thing when the kids in your church have to your results already. At least you know you're getting some of them prepped for the generation to come up behind you. Amen. 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 If you've got your Bibles, open them up to Mark, the 16th chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Woo. 15th and 16th verse. There you go. Like we got a little ring going on. Yes, sir. Oh, huh? Give me just a second. I'm working my... <laughs> You know the praise the Father. Before we get started, everybody stand if you don't care. We're gonna pray together because their praise and worship. It seems like we're fighting a little bit of confusion. Woo. You know the praise and worship gets attacked more yes. than anything That's else. Exactly right. That's because right. if the enemy can, well. can disrupt the praise and worship, he disrupts the rest of the service. Yes, sir. Amen. So we had the enemy who thinks because of our pastor's not here, he thinks he's going to disrupt us no. from carrying over. No. Amen. Well, we got news for the enemy. Hallelujah. We got news for the enemy. We're the born again believers. Yes. Amen. We are children of God. We are yes. We are filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And we have power and authority over him. Are y'all hear that? He does what we say when we say it. That's right. Not Ooh, what he says and he wants to do. So right now as we mm, oh, show the hey, 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 that yeah. spirit of disruption, you have no place here. We order you to go. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you. Somebody praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Y'all can be seated. A few weeks ago, when I was preparing for this Stone Ridge revival out there, the Lord gave me something. And I want to read to you what the Lord had given me. He said, instead of the church assimilating the world into the body of Christ, it has allowed the world to assimilate it. So goes the church, so goes America, so goes the world. Now you look around the world right now and you can see where things are happening, where things are changing that you've not seen in your lifetime. My parents did not see in their lifetime. My grandparents did not see in their lifetime, and their parents didn't see. Come on. Things have changed. Things have become spiritual. This is a spiritual battle here in the last days. This is not something that we wrestle against in flesh and blood, but this is something that we pursue in the Spirit, that we fight in the Spirit, that we stand in the Spirit, right. and we Amen. do battle in the Spirit on our knees, praying to God, yeah. believing God, doing the work of God, and doing the things that God has called us to do. Yeah. If you don't believe it, look around. Let's, let's start with Europe. Let's start with Europe. You looked over at Europe, and when we seen Europe, we started to see liberalism start to start flow through Europe. We started seeing it happening, and all of a sudden, we started to see homosexuals start getting rampant in Europe. Mm -hmm. Then we started to see the the secular humanists coming up, you know. And it's okay, you know, just make yourself happy, do whatever feels good. Come on. Now all of a sudden, they it become the void of Christianity and Islam has moved right up in there. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article the other day that said that 25 percent of France's youth have converted to Islam. Why are they converting to Islam? Because the Christianity is not there. The church has become so weak and so full of itself and let the world creep in and the secular humanism creep into the church that the people are hungry for something. They don't know what it is. They're hungry for something. And when the devil comes up and he offers them something, guess what? They take it. Guess what's happening here in America? We're becoming a secular humanist nation. Liberalism is abounding in this country. Now all of a sudden we've allowed homosexuals to get married. Now all of a sudden we, we see everybody depending on the government. The government has become people's source instead of God. People look to the government for help instead of looking up to the sky from where their help comes from. Jesus. We've replaced 
We are the government has been trying to replace themselves is God in our lives. Amen. And we as Christians have kept our head buried in the sand. We've ignored everything. We have not spoken. We've ignored everything. That's right. We've not paid attention to what's been going on in this country. We've not paid attention to what's been going on in this world. But it's time that the church is going to have to stand and rise up and start battling these things. And we don't battle in the natural. We battle in the spiritual. That's Amen. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, Christians begat, begot Christians. And it's our great commission. That's what we were charged to do. We were charged to go out and tell people the gospel. Amen. That is the great commission in the Bible. It's not your preacher's job. That's it's right. not the evangelist down the road's Amen. job. It's your job. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If you believe in Jesus Christ, it's your job to tell somebody Amen. about it. Amen. 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 In Mark the 15th or 16th chapter, in the 15th verse, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And the 16th says, And he that believeth is baptized and shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Now I'm going to throw out a. Um, what, what do they call that? Disclaimer before I get started? Yeah. Okay? And here's my disclaimer. I'm going to be using some words that are considered dirty words in the church. Yeah. Hell, yeah. sin, judgment, yeah. eternal yeah. damnation. Damnation. Amen. These are dirty words in the church we don't use no more. Yeah. Oh, we can't say that. You might hear them. So if they see words offend you, I'm just letting you know they come. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise brother. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm, I'm going to give you some shocking information that you may not believe this, but it's the truth. God did not save you to go to church. Amen. Right. Amen. Wow. Disciple. And God did not save you to go to church. Mm -hmm. God saved you to be the church. That's right. Amen. Amen. God saved you to be the church, for you to become the church. Not to go to church, not to sit on a pew, no. But God saved us that we would become the church of God. Amen. That we would become His body. That we would be His feet, His legs, His mouth. God, that's what God saved us for, with a purpose. You know, if God had just saved us to come to church, then the minute you knelt down at the altar, He would have raptured you out, you'd have been in heaven. That's right. Amen. 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 That's right. But if He did that, who would be left here to tell somebody? Nobody. Who would be left to tell somebody? <coughs> Repent. Jesus loves you. Come on. There'll be nobody else to tell. So he left the state job. That is his commission. We're doing what Jesus came here to do. Right. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? We're meant to, we're meant to continue his work. Continue you know, there's so many churches that get oh. into this mindset that, well, pastor can take care of it. Mm -hmm. no. Pastor can handle it. No. Pastor can go visit the sick. Pastor can go out and witness the people. Pastor can do this. Pastor can do that. I got news for you. Our pastor needs to be in there. Mm -hmm. He needs to be studying. He needs to be seeking the face of God. Because why? When he studies and he seeks the face of God and he grows, guess what? You grow. Because what he gets, he comes out here and he gives to you. That's not to say that he's not going to do those things because you couldn't lock Richard away and keep him from going to do those things. Because he loves people. He mm -hmm. loves his body. But what I'm saying is this. It's our job. It's yes. our job to get out and go. It's our job to go out and witness. It's our job to go pray for the sick. It's our job. You see what I'm saying? Amen. His Amen. job is to sit in there and stay. He's to get closer to God because the closer He gets, the closer we get because He feeds us what God gives Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, it works that we support Him in that by doing the work. It's a body ministry. Amen. Amen. Say that with me. Body ministry. Body, body ministry. ministry. It's up to the body to minister. Amen. It's up to us to do these things. Not our pastor. Amen. But there's too many churches, I guarantee you, to go up and down through any of these churches you'll see. And you're going to see pastors get burnt out. Amen. Because why? They're having to do everything. Amen. And you're going to see churches not growing. Why? Because the pastor can't even spend time with God. That's right. Because the sheep don't want to do anything. That's right. You said, man, I... I yeah. That's what the Word says. Come on. We can't argue the Word. The Word says we're supposed to be out doing these things. Amen. We're to be a witness. Yeah, like it is, 
And lots of times, even at that, we've replaced God with the church. Did you know that? Come on. Let me ask you something. Last time you witnessed to somebody, what did you tell them? You ought to come to my church. You didn't join my church. You didn't like my church. We're replacing God with church. You know, going up to somebody and say, Brother, I don't know about you to come out to my church. You'd really enjoy it. I should be coming and say, Hey, man, do you know Jesus? <laughs> do you know Jesus? Have you been born again? Have you been saved? Did you know Jesus Christ died for your sins so you didn't have to go to hell? Amen. I got Amen. news for you. The church didn't die for his sins. The church can't save... So, no, Rick's already saved. I'm, you know what I mean. Yeah. Amen. You wait, wait, the church cannot save somebody from their sins. No. Only Jesus Christ can Amen. save somebody right. from their sins. Amen. Tell them about Jesus. Then invite them to your church. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, we're not building our own kingdom here. We're building the kingdom of God. We're establishing His kingdom. Yes. And until we start becoming kingdom minded, don't expect to see great things from God. You know, we, we talk about well, where are the miracles? Where's the power? Where's this? Where's that? People are building their own kingdoms. Why would God anoint and bless you when you're trying to build your own kingdom? But when you're walking in kingdom mentality, you're walking in kingdom authority, God's going to make sure that you're walking in kingdom power. Amen. When you're telling people about Jesus and what He can do, instead of how great your church is, Amen? Amen. Amen. What, what was that one, one pastor said? There's too many cappuccino churches out there. <laughs> so churches want to feed people or give people cappuccino and feed them hot dogs. Come on. They're not worried about telling them the truth. They don't want to. They don't want to tell them sin's going to send you to hell. If you don't repent from what you're doing and turn around, you're going to go to hell. We don't want to hear those things. No. The church don't want to hear that. We want to come in. Oh, I, I, my week has been rough enough. I don't want to come in and hear that stuff. I want something that's going to make me feel good, lift me up, and encourage me. Well, I promise you, when you're standing in the judgment line and they're getting ready to throw, or you see people standing in the judgment line, they're getting ready to cast, be cast in hell. They're going to turn and look at the preacher. Why didn't you tell me that? Why didn't you tell me this was sin? Why didn't you tell me that was wrong? But we don't want to hear those things. We want to go on with our lives. We want to be comfortable. i got news for you. The kingdom of God is not going to be comfortable, especially if you walk in your flesh. See, the thing about with the kingdom of God is there's always room for improvement. There's always... Man, scratch it. That was a bad choice of words. Holy Ghost just slapped me in the back of the head. There's always room for growth. Amen. In the kingdom of God. There's always room for growth in the kingdom of God. Amen. We can always grow. We can continue growing. Because I, I, I promise you, maybe that's why the Lord spoke to me in prayer this morning. Amen. Ain't none of us like Jesus. Amen. I was telling the story of a woman who got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Long story short, she asked me, about Jesus, and he said, I, you know, Holy Spirit, he spoke to her, he said, I have searched the whole world throughout time, and I have found no one like him. No one like Jesus. Jesus. We're, you know, we're not Jesus. No. Nope. Even though he's supposed to be our example, he's supposed to be what we're trying to attain to be. We can still keep growing and growing and growing and growing. Be more like him. Amen. 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 But men seem to want to build their own kingdom. You know, and, and you have to think. What does it mean to be the church? What does it mean to be? We've we seen an example this morning sitting right here of what it meant to be the church. Mm -hmm. This morning, everybody gathered around, anointing hands of the Lord, laying hands on the sister, and we prayed for her. Yes. That's the body. That's the body coming together. That's the body doing the work of Christ. That's the body showing the love of God. That's the body. See what I'm saying? That's the ministry. That's the body. That's what the body has been called to do. Yes. Amen. To help each other. To be with each other. To lift each other up. Not only in these four walls, but all around. Everywhere you see. Did you know that when you're walking in the Spirit, you're walking in the Spirit of God and you're walking in, 
and where you're supposed to be doing walking out, everywhere you go, the kingdom of God is with you. You are in the kingdom of God. Why? Because you are part of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't catching that. Woo! Oh, Y'all ain't catching that. Amen. Amen. You are the kingdom of God. Where you go, the kingdom of God is there because you're there. Amen. Amen. You are part you. Come on now. We start realizing who's living inside of us and the power that we have and the anointing that we have is inside of us. We're going to start getting excited. We're going to start seeing some things change. We're going to start seeing some things happen that we've never seen before. What does the Scripture say? If so be, the same Spirit that raised Christ up from the dead dwells in you. There it is. Same power. The same power that dwells in and raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. We start getting a hold of that. We're gonna be the ones laying the hands on the dead. Get up! Go! Be healed! Amen. Father, we need this for the ministry. Boom! It's there. See what I'm saying? We're gonna have to learn to walk in that. We're gonna learn to hold on to that. We're gonna have to be part of our lives every single day. They have to be part of our life. See, the problem is we don't want to sell out. Amen? We don't want to sell out to God totally and completely and give us because we're afraid we might have to do something or we might have to lose something we don't want to lose. Well, I got news for you. God's not going to cause you to lose anything that you needed to begin with. Come on. Amen. Amen. If you lost something, it's because you didn't need it anyhow. Right. And then whatever you, he did take away from you, he's going to replace with something 20, 30, 100, 50 million times better. Amen. Amen. We're just going to have to have faith and start believing these things. But we establish the kingdom of God through the Holy Ghost. Yes. He is our power. He is our anointing. Amen. He's the driving force within us Amen. to do the things that we need to do. But we're going to have to flow in it and we're going to have to walk in it. Yes. Flow in Him and walk in Him. And all it does, all it calls for is not being, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be holier than thou or all you have to be doing is saying, yes Lord. Surrender yourself to it. Yes Lord. I'll do it. If that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. All you have to do is surrender yourself to it. There's no no magic formula. No. You know, I, as word of faith and Pentecostal, I know we're kind of bad about looking for some kind of formula to get things right. To get this, you know. You step into the other part of my scriptures, I'm like, what? <laughs> we're looking for some kind of way to do things. And just surrender. Surrender yourself to God and believe. That's it. That's all that you have to do. <laughs> we have more faith in our programs than we have in the guidance of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You go to these churches and you see these churches, they got a program for everything. You know, we've got this program, we got that program, and they're doing this over here, and they're doing this. What did God tell you to do? Man's programs? They're not worth anything. They're no. garbage. In the sight of God, they are garbage. Because why? Because a man come up with them. That's right. But when you're led by the Holy Ghost and you do the things that He tells you to do, then they've become something. They've become real. They have become a work of God and not a work of the flesh. Amen. 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 We have to learn to see the difference in what we do in our own lives. Is it a work of God or is it a work of flesh? When we start, there's a lot of good things that go on in our works of flesh. I'm going to tell you. Good, well-meaning things. But if they were created by God, how do you expect God to move in them fully? Amen. Amen. And that's where it comes to. We have to expect, we have to want God to fully move into what we're doing. Then we're going to have to start seeking Him and listening to Him. And that's every each. See, we set up a center of the mind to, well, I, just, I go to church. God called you to be a minister. Come on, right? Not 
Every Amen. single person is called to be a minister. Amen. Brother, I God didn't call me to go up there and preach. Being a preacher is not being a minister. There's preachers who are ministers. And we all because we're all ministers. We're all meant to minister to the lost. To minister yes. to each other. You see what I'm saying? We should look up the word minister and see what it means. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that when Jesus prayed for Peter's mother, mother-in-law, and healed her, that she got up and she ministered to them. Does that mean that she got up and she started preaching to them? No. Nope. No. It means that she got up and she started feeding them. Right. She got up and doing her duties. Become a servant. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what we're to be to each other. Yeah, so. Amen. I see there's another thing we don't like. I ain't nobody serving. You may not be. You ain't nobody serving you. You're a servant of God either. Amen. That's right. Preach it now. That's what he calls us, isn't it? For his servants. Amen. That's right. Huh? It means we're to serve and wait upon the Lord. You know what it says? Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. This is not waiting. Sunday paper. <laughs> I'm waiting on Brother Carl. Waiting on Brother Carl. I'm waiting on God to move. Amen. Come back and check with me about 10 years. I'll probably be in the same spot. Because God's waiting on us to move. I'm supposed to be waiting on the Lord. What does that mean? That means serving the Lord like a waiter. You wait upon the Lord. You serve the Lord. You do the faith that God's called you to do. What, what did Brother Keith call that? Passive faith? Passive faith. Passive faith. Yeah. That's passive faith. What does that mean? That means that I'm believing for something, so I'm going to sit down and like you. No. We've got to put steps, we've got to put footsteps, we've got to put movement to what we're doing. We wait upon the Lord. We serve the Lord. We can't just sit and wait on Him and do something because He's going to be looking at us saying, How are you going to get it when you're sitting here and I got it waiting over here? As long as I'm sitting down, I'm not going to make it aware. If I don't make it aware, I'm not going to get the blessing that I've been waiting on. Come on, amen. Mm -hmm. It's about constantly moving. See, as Christians, we, we, we forget the possibility that we run a race. We run a race. And it doesn't matter if we come in first, and it doesn't matter if we come in last. What matters is we finish it. We have to finish this race that we're running. If we're running a race, we can't we, we can't finish that race by sitting down waiting on something. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. We can't finish that race like that. We have to be on the move. We have to be doing what God's called us to do. We have to be waiting upon the Lord. We have to be serving the Lord. Come on. But we've lost the fire of God. Read through the Bible. It says that He baptized them with the Holy Ghost and Fire. Yeah. He baptized them with the Holy Ghost no. and fire. What is that fire of God? It's the zeal of God. Amen. We have lost that zeal. We don't have the zeal for God. Amen. Mm -hmm. We don't have the zeal for the house of God. We don't have the zeal for anything but what we want. That excitement. Now I guarantee you, if I was telling y'all right now, if I was telling this, this message and I was preaching, I was telling y'all how to get a new Cadillac. Y'all be jumping up, screaming, climbing the walls, swinging off the bars. Better get to it. <laughs> but life's not about a new Cadillac. No. Life's not about things. No. Life is about seeing souls saved. That's right. Amen. That's why we're still here. When it's all said and done, the only thing that's important is that we see another jewel added to his crown. Right. God doesn't care about what you draw. Amen. When it's all said and done. Amen. Because why? You want the heart of God? Y'all want to know the secret to the heart of God? Okay? I'm going to tell you this. I, I remember back in... Um, the 2000s and the 90s. Yeah, people were coming out with all these books. The Heart of God. Mm -hmm. How to get to the Heart of God. Get to the Heart of God is worship. <laughs> get to the Heart of God is praying. Get to the Heart of God is... 
No. You want the heart of God? You'll find it in John 3.16. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The lost, that winning the lost, telling the lost about Jesus, that's where you're going to find the heart of God at because that's what the Bible tells us. For God so loved. He so loved the world. In a parable, he says the kingdom of God is like this, that a man found a great pearl. And he went and he sold everything that he had just so he could get by that land where that pearl was at and he could get that pearl. Mm -hmm. What was he saying? God looked at the world. And it, he loved the people so much that God gave everything that he had to get the world. Mm -hmm. What was it that he gave? His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, whom He loved. He gave His only Son, Jesus, come out of here, He died and rose again so that we could be born again. Right. Amen. That's the heart of God. That's where God's heart at. It's in His people. <coughs> when I say His people, I'm not talking about just the church body. I'm talking about the entire world. Because truth is, You know who God's second son was? Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all been in church for how long? Adam. 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 He was the created son of God. That's right. Read the word. He was the created son. Jesus is the son. Adam is the created son of God, which makes us children of God. Mm hmm. We're all His children. But we're all not going to be there if we don't accept Jesus Christ into our hearts. I got to wait. I don't know if I probably told y'all this story before. I, there was this self-proclaimed Buddhist girl I worked with. And she said, I couldn't serve a God who cast people into hell. I said, whoa. Right there. God doesn't cast anybody into hell. You're already headed to hell. He's just trying to save you. She won't talk to me no more. Uh, I didn't quite say it that. That was nice, nice of what I said, but I, mean, I explained it to her. You know, it's, it's, you're already headed to hell. Jesus came to save you from going. God doesn't cast anybody in hell. You're already headed that way. That's right. See, that's the thing. If we in Christian, come here. Y'all don't have to raise your hands or nothing like that. But do you honestly believe in hell? Yes. Yes. We find it easy to believe in heaven. Oh, I can't wait to get there. Well, there's a flip side to that. If you honestly believe in hell, and you really believe that people are going to burn there for an eternity, why aren't you telling people? I wish they had a pen. Why aren't we telling people? Why aren't we telling them? Look, there is a, a hell to shine. But there's a heaven to gain. That's right. Amen. Jesus came that you didn't have to go to hell. That's yeah. right. Hell was not made for No, it was not. But why have we lost the fire of God? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, you all got your Bibles there? Starting in the first verse. In the King James, he says this. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall become lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasting, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, and without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady minded lovers of pleasures, more than treasures of God, having a form of godliness and denying the power of, from such, stay away from such, for this is the sort they which lead into house, or, for this is the sort they are led into houses of captivity, silly women laden with sin, and led away with diverse lusts, forever learning, and never coming to the knowledge of God. That's what's in the church today. That's what's creeped into the church. Amen. Amen. You know, 
Satan could not defeat the church, so he decided to join it. Let's think in for a minute. Satan could not defeat the church. How do we know? What, what did what Jesus tell Peter? The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Satan cannot win a battle head to head with the body of Christ. He cannot. There's no well if he's no, there's no ifs to it. He just simply cannot win a head to head battle with the body of Christ. So what does he do? Do you remember when the children of Israel were going through the desert? Yes. And they were scared, and the guy called them Baal. You remember the guy the donkey talked to? Mm -hmm. Do you know how it was advice that Balaam gave the man of how to stop the armies of God coming through? Distract them with things. Send things into their camp to join up with them. To distract them from God. To have them turn away from God and start worshiping false idols. Satan uses the same tactic today. He's come into the church as an angel of light, distracting us from the truth. Where do you think all these weird doctrines in the church come from to begin with? That's right. You mean, I mean, you look around today, we have churches that are teaching you, don't eat meat. Don't eat meat. Stay away from meat. Don't eat meat. Also, Timothy, in the latter days, there are going to be weird doctrines come out where they're going to tell you not to eat meat. Mm -hmm. What? I mean, it's prophesied in the Bible. So many weird doctrines. People don't... All the Holy Ghost is... Oh, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen anymore. There's no more speaking in tongues. There's no more laying on hands. That stuff don't work. It's passed away. That happened 2,000 years. How did, how did the power of God die all of a sudden? <laughs> Come on now. I mean, brother, how did the power of God die? Woo! The power of God did not die. No. No. The Holy Ghost is still alive and strong. Amen. 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 He didn't pass away. He didn't leave. Matter of fact, when the Holy Ghost does leave this earth, and he will leave this earth one day. We'll be going with him. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. When the Holy Ghost leaves and he departs this, when God's Spirit departs this earth, we're going to be carried up with him because why? He lives in here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He said, I will never leave you. I will never yeah. forsake you, even to the ends of the earth. So when he goes, we go. We go. Come on. <laughs> well, that ain't enough to excite you. I don't know what is. Yeah. When he goes, we go. Amen. <laughs> you know, and I know when preachers get up and preach and pastors, you know, God didn't ordain pastors to build a church. Nope. No pastor in this world did God say, I ordain you to build a church. God ordained pastors, preachers, evangelists, teachers, prophets. Apostles, I think all five, right? They preach the word. Yeah, all five. Uh, preach the truth. That's right. Just the flat out truth. That's what God said to them. Preach the truth. And then God will build the church. Amen. Did you know that there's an example in Scripture on that? Mm -hmm. You know, some Scripture on that? Let me give you some Scripture on that. In Acts, the second chapter, he preached the truth. Peter preached the truth to him, didn't he? He said, This Jesus Christ whom you crucified was the Son of God, and he was raised from the dead on the third day Amen. for the remission of your sins. And you crucified him. That's just paraphrasing, making the short readers lives of this version of that sermon. And the Bible says that it pricked their hearts. What does that mean? Well, when you look when he, he told Paul, he said, you find it hard to kick against the pricks. It was a cattle prod with a nail on it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they got jabbed in the heart with a cattle prod with a nail on it. what it felt like. Mm. Because they knew they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And they said, what can we do? What can we do to be saved? What can we do to be remedying this terrible thing that we've done? Peter said, repent and be baptized. Yeah. Amen. And in Acts 2.47, it says, after this sermon, it says, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now you'll find other spots in there where they would preach 2,000 be added to the church. 
5,000 will be added to the church. 3,000 will be added to the church. In one sermon. Could you? I could not imagine preaching a, a message. I would have to you know, preach a message. <laughs> Five thousand people come to an altar call. Somebody else probably have to go be praying. I'd be going. <laughs> I'd be excited. Amen. Let me tell you what Scripture says. When one person, just one person, gets saved, it says there's rejoicing. Among the angels. That's right. Amen. Now I'm I'm on to the best of my ability. I am not a graceful person, okay? I'm gonna try to show you a little bit of what that means. According to the scripture, that rejoicing means just to flow yourself around like this and just dance all over. <laughs> and celebrate and just watch. And so that happens among the angels. It didn't say the angels did that. That's right. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Who sits among the angels? Mm -hmm. The Father. One person gets saved. For each one person gets saved, their soul, they get born again. God gets up and He dances wildly, flinging Himself around, rejoicing, happy. Go back to David. When David danced before the Lord. Yes. God danced because the soul got saved. That's what the scripture says. Look that word up rejoice. To our English sometimes is so limited to and he rejoiced. No! He's like, ah! <laughs> Happy. Because one soul got saved. Then and I. Then and I. Yeah. yeah. We need to keep God dancing. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to keep God dancing. We need to keep him celebrating. We need to keep him happy. It thrills it. Just a minute, can you? Does it not do your heart good to know that when you said, Jesus, come into my heart, your father got up and started dancing? Yeah, I'm yes. Amen. They come home. Amen. Amen. They're here. Kill the fatter Woo! They're home. Jesus, come here. Come here. Let's... Gabriel, see that? Mm. Woo! He celebrates and he's happy because you came home. Oh, amen. Is that not humbly the creator of the universe? Oh, the one who created all things, everything, there was nothing that wasn't created without him, gets excited when you come home. My son, my daughter, they're home. Amen. Well, brother, they ain't telling how many fatty cats are laying up on that table waiting. <laughs> at the marriage supper oh man we think I don't know if any of y'all been to any of them old Pentecostal churches them old women sit them tables up through there oh my goodness man when I was a kid them tables be as long as this ring <laughs> there might be three rows of them sit up here and have fried chicken more fried chicken you can shake a stick at mashed potatoes green beans squash fried up whatever my uncle would drag me to those when his wife made him go to church. He's like, you want to go to by myself. So he dragged me out to it. That's some of the best eating I ever ate. Amen. Cornbread, biscuits, beans, it, it was all there. Yeah. Man, I cannot imagine. I cannot even imagine what those tables are going to look like at the marriage. Amen. Oh. Oh. I can't even imagine. <laughs> That'd be okay. <laughs> I mean, we, we think about the best that we can eat. But what about the best God's going to lay out for us to eat? Amen. Come on into my marriage feast. Come on in. Good faith, sir. Come on. I got this set right here. This seat has been waiting on you from the beginning of time. Amen. When I created the heavens, I created this seat and it had your name on it and it's been waiting on you to get here. Hallelujah. How do I know that? Because Bob said, come on in to the place that I've prepared for you. Yes. Okay. Jesus said, no, that I go away. I go to prepare a place for you. I go to get your place ready in heaven. Amen. Amen. With the, oh, I've got this mansion. It's not just that. you got a seat at the marriage supper. you got it. Man, you talk about an all night worship festival. It might be a long millennial worship festival. You know what I'm saying? Your place at the table. It's, it's there. <laughs> These are the things that's waiting on us. Don't we want to share them? Hallelujah. Amen. What does that say to the 
Bible says that you may have sent out servants to go to bring these people to the feast you prepared. It said all the people they went to, they began to make excuses why they couldn't be there. Well, I just bought some ground. I gotta go look at it. I just bought some mules. I gotta, I gotta go try them out. I just got married. I go with my wife. You know. And they come back and he was mad. He said, "Go into the cities. You grab everybody you can find and bring them in here." So they go out. And they bring everybody they can get. He comes back. Master is still. Tables are still empty. He says, "Go up the highways and the hedges. Compel them to come in. Get the lame. Get the hog. Whoever you can grab a hold of, compel them to come to this feast." What does that word compel mean? That word means you grab them up like this and you make sure they're coming. Yeah, that's right. Regardless of whether they wanted to or not. And, God, and Jesus, such is the kingdom of God. That table's done been prepared. Your seat's there. Your name's already on it. Go get you some brothers and sisters to come. Go tell them, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Share the gospel. Let people Amen. know what's going on. Yes. In Mark 16, he said, He who believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he who believes not shall be damned. We're afraid to call sin, sin. Come on. That's right. That's right. We're scared of it. We might offend somebody. Somebody's feelings might get hurt. Somebody may not come to church. Somebody might quit paying their tithes. Sin is sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, the Scripture says this in Isaiah, the fifth chapter. It says that hell has enlarged its borders and its mouth has opened wide. Hell is continually enlarging its borders. And its mouth is open wider and wider to receive those that are going there. Because what? Because we're scared. Mm -hmm. We're scared. Say, sin is sin. The Bible says no alcoholic shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Or it says no drunkard. That's right. The Bible no says no whoremonger. The Bible says no adulterer. The Bible says no this, no that. We don't tell people that. We're scared. We may upset them. I'd rather have them be upset me here for a short time and spend eternity with me than to tickle their ears and know that when I get in heaven that they went to hell because I didn't say anything. Amen. We call sin, sin. We don't want to... I mean, we're, uh, they're living together, but it'll be alright. Sooner or later they'll get married. That's sin. You're living in sin. You need to repent. We don't tell people stuff like that. We're scared of it. And we've, we've become so politically correct, we're, offend, we're, we're afraid we may offend somebody. I'm sorry, if you don't stop this homosexual practice, you're going to go to hell. God does not hate homosexuals. Contrary to what people try to say when you say that's a sin, the church should not hate homosexuals. You should love homosexuals. But I hate the sin they're in. Right. Because sin is sin. Whether somebody's living together, whether somebody's drunk, or somebody's at home, it's all sin. Amen. And people who practice these things are going to split hell wide open. Amen. And the Bible says if you see the wicked man in his deeds and you fail to warn him, their blood's going to be required to your hands. Well, I said it again. We don't use words like repent, hell, eternal damnation anymore. But did you know this? That for every one sermon Jesus preached about heaven, he preached ten about hell. Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't afraid to say, if you don't repent, you're going to hell. Why? Because he loved the people so much, he was willing to die for them so they didn't have to go there. Right. That's right. right. When we say it, we need to be saying it because we love the people so much that we don't want to see them going there. Not because that we're judging them for their actions. It's because, of, look, man, I, I don't want to see you go there. There's another way. There, yeah, there's another way. Actually, there's one better way. One, one way. His name is Jesus Christ. I am the way to the Father. There's no other way but Him. Amen. We need to love people enough to tell them the truth. And Jesus preached hell more than he did heaven. It's because of our lack of resolve to tell the truth, though, we have created a weak, sin sick, powerless church. Amen. Mm -hmm. A weak, sin sick, powerless church. 
If you're not having victory in your life over the things that's coming up against something you, wrong. there's something wrong. Now, I'm just going to say this flat out. You're not right with God. Because you're not hearing His voice. You're not being led by Him. And He will make a way for you to overcome. Whatever it is that you've allowed to come in between you and God, search it out and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Brother Carl, you're, you're judging me. No. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you from my own experience. Amen. I know. I know. You think I've been on the losing end more times than probably most of y'all count. Because why? There was something in my heart that kept me separated from God. Kept me from walking with God like I should be walking with God. Mm -hmm. And that's the same the truth for all of us. If we're facing, if we're being defeated constantly, we need to find out why. Because I'm telling you this right now. The Bible says that you are the head and not the tail. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? You are the head and not the tail. You are meant to overcome everything. Yes. Sometimes overcoming is a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Overcoming can be a process. What happens? We're working things out. What does the Bible say? For I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy compared to the glory of God which shall be revealed to us, through us, in us. What is the overcoming of this world? What's he saying? He's saying in that verse in Romans 8, he said, I guess it the or I reckon that the stripping away of our flesh, because when we overcome, that's what hurts is our flesh. Our flesh hurts because we don't like what we're having to deal with. That the stripping away of our flesh is not even worthy. The pain of stripping away of our flesh is not even worthy to be compared, compared to the glory of God that's going to be revealed to you, in you, and through you. Amen. How many of you want the glory of God in you? Amen. How many of you want the glory of God to be on you and work through you? Amen. Guess what? You're going to be stripping away some flesh to get there. Amen. And as we all know, whether it's fit, whether it's metaphorically or whether it's physically, it's going to hurt. It is going to hurt. But it's all right. Jesus suffered a lot more at Calvary, didn't He? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we've created this weak, sin-filled church. And we wonder why we're not overcoming things that the world's throwing at us. It's simply because we're not allowing God to be God in our lives. Amen. If Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne, we will overcome. Amen. Amen. Yes. This next one is, is Matthew 7, 13 and 14 in the Message Bible. You know, we follow everything but God. He says in that, he says, Don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff, even though crowds of people do. The way to life the way to life to God is vigorous and it requires total attention. Mm -hmm. The way to life to God is vigorous and it requires total attention. Amen. I started to say earlier, the Pentecostals and Word of Faith, we're the world's worst about wanting to go buy some book about a formula, how to get there. Somebody comes out with a book, Seven Steps to Prosperity. And somebody else wants to be more prosperous, so they come out with a book, Five Steps to Prosperity. <laughs> Somebody else wants a little bit more money. Three steps of prosperity. I'll get you there quicker. Forget those books. Right here, this is the book. Amen. This is the book that will tell you the truth. Amen. This is Amen. You want to be living in prosperity? Accept Jesus Christ in your heart and follow That's after right. Him. Amen. You'll find true prosperity. Amen. Peace with God. That's prosperity. That's true prosperity. Our pastor tells us that, doesn't he? True prosperity is peace with God. What does that mean? That means I don't have to worry about anything. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, when we start feeling down, we start feeling discouraged, we start feeling this. Uh, hey, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and that right there is the most important thing. Uh, you know? 
That's what even Jesus told his disciples. Lord, we was able to cast out devils. We was able to lay hands on the sick. Yeah. He don't rejoice in none of that. Rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what you rejoice in. That is what the good thing. All this is up to you. That's right. Everything that goes on in your life is up to you. Yeah. We have that authority. We have that power. We have that decision. Everything that goes on in your life. But I can't control what goes on over here. No, but you can control your reaction to it. The Bible said this. It said that David was a man after God's own heart. Why was David a man after God's own heart? Have you ever asked yourself that? Was it because David was so holy? Well, after sleeping with Bathsheba and having her husband killed, I don't call that holy. No. Was he super obedient to God? He took the senses when God told him not to. God started killing the people. He didn't do his obedience, did he? Why was David a man after God's own heart? Because even when David screwed up, David knew where to go. You know? Amen. That's right. He didn't run from God. He continually he run to God. Amen. He chased after God with his whole heart. He pursued after God, wanting God all the time. You would hear him in Psalms, Lord, don't withdraw your spirit from me. Lord, they come up against me. Lord, deliver me. Amen. Yes, constantly sought after me. God, constantly. He was a man after God's own heart. not about the mistakes that you've made. It's not about the things that you've done wrong. They're under the blood, so it don't matter anymore. What matters is here and now. Amen. Amen. What, what we always say, now faith is. Right? The kingdom of God is now. Amen. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. It's now. When we, guess what? When we finally reach tomorrow, guess what time it'll be? Now. The kingdom of God is now. Amen. 